early meaning like quarter to four and uh, we left Honiara and we've just tripped across the bay to Tulagi which is where we're going to get our boat hauled out this morning. The island of Tulagi, we're just going around the northern side of it uh, to try and find the slipway. We've got no information about what the slipway looks like or how we're going to pull the boat out of the water but I guess we'll find out when we get there. There's our slipway, looks like just a big tray. We're going to drop into the water and then we're going to go and sit on top of it I guess. Uh, they're not quite ready for us, so we're just going to float about in the bay. We're just having a chat to see how they're going to set up the platform for us. We've given them the specs of our Lagoon 450. Hopefully we sit nicely on their cradle. Just looking in this water here we can see that the tracks come just about to where we are tied up to Santo Star. And um, they're going to bring the cradle right down to us I think and then just pull us, pull us onto it. So um, I'm quite keen to see how this is going to work. Just been checked out by the police again. This is our third time so far. <laughs> so we're going to try and get our keels to sit on one of the planks down there so that the weight is being taken by the keels rather than the hull. Dave's just told me that he's just had an email from uh, Marsden Cove, which is in Whangarei, which is supposed to be an official port of entry for New Zealand. And um, even during these COVID times, we've heard that it's going to be accepted as a port of entry, only to be told now that it's not. So I just don't think New Zealand can really get their, well, can't get their shit together, really. Can't decide what they're going to do. So I think we're going to end up in Opua, which is fine, but it's, uh, it's a long way away from where we want to be, which is down in the Marlborough Sound. Oh well, that's just what it is. Uh, the guys have now decided to chalk up the uh, medial side of the hulls as well. Once the sail drives had been taken apart, it was obvious we had smashed teeth on both the crown wheel and the pinion. So while the teeth were rebuilt, we did some exploring of what was a Japanese defensive position during World War II. This is just one of the um, U-caves that the Japanese carved out of the limestone hill here on Tulagi Island. And they used it as a defensive position during World War II. Bit of effort's gone into it, that's for sure. <laughs> With our hopes set on returning home, we decided to not wait for replacement sail drives. Instead, we'd wait to do full repairs in New Zealand, alongside a multitude of other boat repairs that would require us to be hauled out again. Once the sail drive was back together, Brave received a new coat of antifoul for the trip back to New Zealand. Unfortunately, at short notice, Fishing Vessel Red was the only antifoul available. Chase being a 
happy helper getting ready to provision in Honiara. So we're just making our way back to Honiara from Tulagi, having had our repairs done, which appear to be a success so far. So far. And we're just working out how many tins of baked beans we've got. Che's got the beetroot. Four beetroots. How many spaghettis we need? We are going to go to the police station and going to talk to them about moving across to Sandfly Passage for the weekend. And if we could preempt it, hopefully we won't get bothered by police visits when we're there. The Honiara police were super helpful, assuring us that they'd forewarn authorities in the Florida islands that a foreign yacht would be stopping by for a visit, keeping in mind that most of the communities in the islands hadn't received visitors for six months due to COVID-19. First we stopped in Roderick Bay, where the locals were pleased to see us. Coming? They come through that yeah. way, do they? Okay, if I undo that, if you undo this. Yeah, Can you just go forward a little bit? Yeah. It's yeah. Okay. Just the rain today, so I made a uh, welcome drink. Like oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So give you a present. Give us some flowers instead, that's yeah. fantastic. Oh, thank you. The thing is, is one of the locals have done this beautiful floral design for us. But all it means is that ants have <laughs> been brought onto the boat. Roderick Bay and they're desperately trying to encourage people to come here so they try and make us feel super welcome which we have been made to feel welcome haven't we? This, this, these guys um, just put this light, well it's the coral heads really, up onto these platforms. Is this just to dry it out Joseph? So they just dry out the coral and then it gets ground down yeah. into a powder. Ready for to Yeah. And uh, burn it. Oh, you burn it? Yeah. Oh, I see. So this is all going to be lit up. And then, do you sell the lime in Honiara, perhaps? Yeah, of course. Uh, if you sell only one thing to kill a bike, it costs uh, 250. Huh? I'm just watching you get the fruit. <laughs> You just break it all off. Looks like it grows on a vine. Yeah. Grows on a vine up the tree. Have you knocked a few of them down? Ah, there it is. Yeah. There's one. So they chew on that along with the bitter nut. Yes. And dip that in the lime. Yeah. And then whammo. Feeling good. <laughs> Well, that's pretty clever. I reckon close to 2,000, this cruise ship, it um, just hit a rock in Sandfly Passage and then it hightailed it to here to try and get some refuge. And all the locals here rescued the passengers on board, brought them to shore, and this is where the ship ended up. Morning this morning, leaving the Florida Islands, heading back to Honiara where we're going to check out because we've had word from our weather router that it's looking good for a trip to Lata. And then, um, weather, when the weather comes right for a trip down to New Caledonia, we'll leave the Solomons for good. This is good sailing, heading back to Honiara. We'll check out this afternoon. Look at us going to check out of the Solomons. Seven months later, <laughs> this was not expected, was it? No. Here's Michael, That's there he is. <laughs> He's going to join us on our trip back to New Zealand. We were heading for New Zealand to access multiple trades. In July, we'd applied for an exemption to sail to Australia, where we hoped, as Kiwis, we'd be welcomed in. But like most countries, borders closed meant exactly that and no exemption was issued. With mounting maintenance to complete on Brave, we decided New Zealand was the only practical and possible destination to head for. So with that decided, and Michael on board as crew, all that was left was to provision, 
and return to Brave for an early morning departure. Join us next time as we depart for New Zealand.